Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today I have a very, very special hunting video for you here. I've got my friend Oscar with GRS Rifle Stocks hanging out with me here in South Georgia. We are right here in the middle of primitive weapon season. Um, our scheduling did not end up working out well enough where we could end up doing a, like a full-on, you know, centerfire rifle hunt. So I thought since Oscar's from Norway, it would be really cool to bring out my Norwegian Kamalader service rifle. This is a really interesting part of Norwegian military history, um, not to mention one of the most fascinating freaking black powder rifles you're ever going to see. And uh, we are going to be poking some stuff with some of the rigs that he brought. But, dude, I'm looking so forward to this. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> so, I know you're familiar with the Kamalader. Mm -hmm. You know, th this is uh, one old service rifle. So just to put it in perspective, guys, this is a Kamalader's <laughs> produced in 1857. That's insane. Yeah, unfortunately, dude, I'm not sure if you knew this or not, but a lot of these freaking guns were melted down for scrap yep. in Norway, which is really unfortunate, you know? And weren't you saying something about like possibly the laws of Norway don't allow these things to be used for hunting anymore? I think so, yeah. Uh, you have to have a certain uh, jewel. Um, at the impact, and you can't you can't get that get to that kind of power level with uh, with the common loaders. Well, this thing is a bit of a ballistic it's marshmallow. It's a bit of a beast, yeah. Yeah, so you got a 600 grain projectile. Uh, it's about a 69 caliber, so it's roughly, I guess, the best way to equate it is to like a shotgun slug. But yeah. what's interesting is we're down here filming with FX uh, air guns as well, and when you look at it, it almost looks like a giant air gun projectile. It does, yeah, doesn't for it? sure. It's kind of got that look to it. Uh, so we're going to be shooting 100 grains of black powder. Ooh. Okay. And then this is used with a percussion cap, and this is an underhammer rifle. So, comma loader means chamber loader. You know that. Mm -hmm. And this guy pops up and exposes your little chamber. Now we are going to let you shoot this thing, and we'll load it. I'll show you how it's loaded mm -hmm. here in a bit. Now let's show off uh, one of the guns that we wanted to use on this trip. For a few other uh, things too that you brought along. Yep, we'll we'll sure. show a little new and old. So we got the Kamalader, now some new Norwegian tech. So this is the um, <laughs> the GRS Fenris in a um, Savage 110 Tactical Carbon. It's a 6.5 PRC which is a hell of a round. Um, and this is just set up, this is a normal setup that we use for uh, for hunting, um, both for red stags back in Norway but also here we're going to try it on both, uh, oh, we're going to do pigs and coyotes. Yep. So, um, awesome. yeah, it's yep. kind of a development through the years. So, but it's amazing though that this rifle is 165 years old and it's still dead accurate. I mean, it, it's pretty fascinating to me. Like, it is. you know, when you look at older military rifles, you know, not a lot of people take, especially percussion cap guns, mm -hmm. like out in the field anymore, especially not one like this because yep. these things are so freaking rare. Yep. Uh, I tell you what, with that being said, what, you want to shoot it? Yes. All right, let's get you a few shots on it. I'll show you how it's loaded. Let's check it out. Let's go. Let's do it. We're gonna go get in the woods later, but I figure you wanna take a few shots with this thing. Obviously, wanna make sure you know what you're aiming at and all. Uh, under hammer. So this big old crazy guard here serves as like part of the, the leaf spring that powers the hammer. We're gonna cock the hammer to full cock and take the clicking leather out, all right? That's your safety, and that also allows for dry firing. All right, we've got a percussion cap on there. You are good. Go ahead and shoot it, Oscar. And uh, we actually have a pig carcass from the other night uh, out here. We're gonna see if the Kamalotter shoots all the way through this pig carcass, because this is gonna give us an idea of what it's gonna do to our deer, so we can make sure we get a good kill. Whoo! Did we connect? I couldn't see from that cloud of smoke. <laughs> it's hard to see. Well, we have a camera down there, so let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna show you, uh, while we're checking the footage here, I'm gonna show you how to load this thing. So now that you've fired the shot, you're going to put the hammer on full cock. Yep. And, safety. you know, yeah, put the safety in. All right, now I'm going to show you a cool feature. When you work the chamber to the rear, the little ledge under there pops the, the spent cap off and it should fall out of the bottom. So go oh. ahead and work, hold it kind of level, work it. Now watch, watch the cap fall out, look. Look at that. It cool. jettisons the cap. That is cool. Yep. So, looks good. Now, if we were in combat, we would be loading in a hurry, but considering we're concerned about safety, I'll make sure we don't have any burnt embers in here. <sighs> that looks good. All right, because this is a chamber loader, commer loader, chamber loader, right? 
this chamber's exposed. So now instead of having to work a projectile down the barrel and use a ramrod and all, we can simply load the gun from the rear. I use these little glass vials. This is 100 grains of one and a half F Swiss powder, fine shooting powder. Put our one and a half Swiss in here. We'll grab right here and just sort of do this, like hold it level. Just to make sure it's level. And that settles the powder yep. in, that's correct. Okay, we'll settle our powder in. We'll grab a felt wad, get it level. We got our, our fancy loading tool here that turned on the wood lathe. Mark Novak turned on the wood lathe. Cool. He did all the work on this gun. We got a felt wad, take our 600 grain projectile and we just got a little piece of, look, look at that. We're gonna shoot my head out of there. That's a, <laughs> so we, ha, we, had some, we had some promo uh, cards that we put together mm. and I took a, a punch and sliced some one inch uh, cardboard discs. All right. So I guess we're gonna be shooting me out of this. That's okay. We'll go ahead and just use that to form a little Sabo. Mm. All right. Push it down with our thumb. Use this thing to get it. This also makes sure it's straight because the shape of this is in the shape of the projectile. Give it a little bit of force, that looks nice. And then last but not least, a little bit of lubricant from our friends at, what's that word? Svartkrut.net. There you go, yep. these guys, black big shout out. Black, Blackpowder.net, That's right. Norwegian. Now he makes this uh, lubricant for like uh, one of y'all's Norwegian revolvers, but mm -hmm. I use it on the Kamalotter. I do use uh, like a, an utter cream uh, for this, but when I'm out in the field, the utter cream is water-based, so I don't like using the utter cream because it'll rust. Mm. So this this is much better. All right, so we got some lubricant. I usually kind of put it around, the, lubricate the hole a little bit, <laughs> stick some lube around the hole and get it all in there. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. And then we're gonna put a percussion cap. This is under hammer percussion rifle. I just squeeze the cap a little bit. Go ahead and put a fresh cap on there. Now, if we were in warfare, they, there's a cartridge for this, obviously, instead of lo loose, loose components. Close it. Oh, well. It's down. It is, okay. okay. All right, full cock, remove the clicking leather. This time, try the cranium. Yep. A hog has a pretty hard skull. I'm curious to see, you may have to bullseye it a little bit. It might be a, a touch high, whenever you're ready. Ready? Send it. Oh, you had the clicking leather oh. in. That was a that was a well, practice. It, it that works. was a practice run. It was a good squeeze. That though. was a good squeeze. That was a good practice. All right, in the cranium. Ready? Oh! Oh! All right. I it's, cannot believe this rifle is 165 years old, <laughs> and we're still having fun. Cool. All right, dude. <laughs> I think you're good to go. I think you can shoot a deer. Let's go. Thank Get you in the woods. Yes, it's gonna be fun. Okay, we got out in the woods, man. It was a great walk in, beautiful sit, a nice mm -hmm. evening. You know, we had these does come in, you fired your shot, okay. and how'd you feel about the shot? That was perfect. <clears throat> it's, a, it's the first kill I ever had with a black powder. So it's, that was, that was pretty epic. And uh, being an ex-service um, rifle, and be, me, me being an ex-sniper, that's kind of cool. So this is like 160 or 100, uh, 140 years be between us. Yeah. So it's kind of connecting those dots and it's a beautiful rifle. It is cool to experience the marksmanship heritage mm -hmm. of Norwegian soldiers. I mean, yep. to think that whoever had this gun was probably just as capable as you are yep. and might have used it to defend themselves. He was themselves. probably much, much better than I was. Yeah. 
So we, uh, gosh, she didn't go far. No. I she, mean, she, she might've went in the woods 50 feet. Yeah, that's not much. Not she, far. It was a perfect shot. Um, What's cool about these projectiles is when mm -hmm. they pierce through the hide, they make like just a perfect hole. Yep. Like if you took a, a hole punch and went ka -chink, Yep. and like punched it out, yep. it, it's, they make a clean hole and they don't damage the meat. No. So the cool thing about black powder, it's moving so slow that the projectile just passes through and you're creating a wound channel, yep. the animal bleeds out, whatever, and there you go and you don't ruin any meat. Yep. Versus a high-speed rifle projectile, as great as they are and as much energy as they have and as much of a dump of energy as they have and the shock that occurs. Um, a high-speed rifle projectile causes a temporal and, and permanent wound cavity. So it blows out and that temporal wound cavity that blows out when that projectile expands can actually rupture organs, stop the heart, uh, snap the neck. I mean, there's many things that those projectiles mm -hmm. can do that, that give them their killing efficiency. Black powder, shot placement is so much more important. Mm -hmm. You have to hit the boiler room with a black powder rifle, and you did, man. You said it, this one travels at 1,400 feet per second, roughly? I think it's a little slower than that. I think these projectiles are only moving about 1,200, 1,300 feet per second. They're yep. really slow. Uh, they are ballistic march lows. You notice on the sights, if we were to take a longer range shot, look at this. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> you got a whole series of, uh, you know, of different graduations, so. Anyway, man, you know, I'm so proud of you, dude. Thank you very much. You, thank, you thank rose you to so the occasion. Much for, thank you so much for bringing this one. We talked about it uh, earlier as well. And finally, having, having the chance to do it is fantastic. I'm really glad you got to come along. And man, I can't wait to check out some of the random things we're going to be doing on this trip. I yep. mean, I know this is just scratching the surface yes. of what is going to happen over the next couple of days while yep. we're hanging out. And uh, man, thank you so much. I know you came all the way from Norway. I always enjoy when we get to hang out yes. and drink beer. Same. And, uh, you know, look, <laughs> we were talking about Thor, you know, yep. drunk Thor. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, real superheroes drink beer, y'all. Okay. You remember <laughs> Thor. But look, don't go as far down the rabbit hole as Thor did and no. get fat. All right, you got it. You got you keep, watch, watch those drinks. Don't drink too many. <laughs> Dude, awesome. Dude, thank you so awesome much, man. man. All right, have a good one, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's video. Check out Oscar's stocks. They are amazing. I know we didn't use them in this particular video, but I think we had an adequate substitute. Yep. Hope everyone has a great day. Make sure you get out in the woods. Be safe. Get some hunting in. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. How much beer have you drank in the last couple of days? Case or two? <laughs> case or two? I mean, which no. is it a case or two? No, we had, um, I think yesterday we had a case. A Good deal. Yeah, yeah. We, need, we need to get more beer. Yep. Beer is a very integral part of deer camp. Yes, it is. Uh, it is the lubrication of deer camp. Yeah. If you will. 100%. It is the glue. And yesterday, yesterday was really warm as well, so that's why we, mm. you yep. gotta, know. Gotta cool off. Yeah, for sure. Can't get too hot. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make some breakfast and go to town and get some more beer. Perfect. Let's do it.